All right, guys. So today, what we're going to talk about is something called the mole concept. Okay, so basically, the mole concept is a way for us to calculate the number of atoms in a given sample of a substance. Okay, so if we're given a sample of carbon-12, we want to be able to calculate the exact number of atoms of carbon-12 in that sample. Okay, and so the way the way this the way we do this is there was there was this guy named Avogadro, very very historical man, very old, and what he did was he wanted to find out the exact number of carbon-12 atoms in a given sample of carbon-12. Okay, and so he did lots of experiments, lots of tests, lots of calculations, and eventually he came up with this number. He came up with 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay, and so he found that there were this many, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon-12 in 12 grams of carbon-12. Okay? And so, what he did then, so he found, he, fa he figured out this number, you know, lots of hard calculations, lots of, lots of experiments and all that. Okay, and then what he did was he said that he, he, he decided to define this number as one mole. So he said that if he had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon-12, he would he refer to this as one mole of carbon-12. So the same way that if we have 1,000 grams of anything, we instead write this as one kilogram, okay? And so one, the number one when we're talking in kilograms, is much smaller than the number 1,000. It's much easier to deal with. And in the same way, Avogadro decided that instead of talking about the massive numbers of actual atoms that we encounter in everyday life, he talked about the number of moles. So the number of big groups containing 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Okay? And so this, you know, this number, it's pretty big, it's pretty random, whatever. It's useful for us to help out carbon-12, but how does it help us otherwise? Well, what Avogadro did uh, was he extended this to other substances. So if we look at this, in carbon-12, in one atom of carbon-12, sorry, there are 12 nucleons. There are six protons and six neutrons. Okay. And so what's important here is that the mass of all these protons, the mass of each proton, sorry, in any substance, so the mass of a proton in carbon-12, or the mass of a proton in oxygen, or the mass of a proton in any any other any other substance, will always be the same. And the same goes for neutrons. The, the mass of a neutron is the same no matter what substance it's found in. Okay. And so as a result of that, um, what what we're able to do, what Avogadro was able to do, was he was exact. He was able to extend this uh, this this figure to substances with other mass numbers. So, for example, if we look at carbon-13, okay, and so carbon-13 has one extra neutron added in, okay, and so while the mass number of carbon-12 was obviously 12, the mass number of carbon-13 is 13, okay, and so what this means is that if we have one mole of carbon-13, if we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon-13, it will weigh or well, those atoms on a whole will weigh 13 on 12 what one mole of carbon-12 weighs. Okay, so this is just ratios. There are 13 nucleons in an atom of carbon-13. There are 12 nucleons in an atom of carbon-12. Okay, and we know that the molar mass, sorry, or the mass of one mole of carbon-12 is 12 grams, okay? And so what we're able to do as a result of that is we can now take any element x with mass number z, okay, 
and we can say that the mass of one mole of element X, the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of element X, will be equal to Z divided by 12 times 12 grams. Okay, and so that's the reason this is true is because this, this element X with Z with, a, with with mass number Z has Z protons and neutrons in its nucleus. Okay, and so for that reason, by ratios, the mass of one mole of X will be Z on 12 times 12 grams. Okay, and so as you might have noticed that if we do this for any substance, this number, if we multiply Z on 12 by 12 will always come out to be Z grams. Okay, and so for this reason, we call this number the molar mass, okay? Molar mass. Okay, so the molar mass of any substance is the mass of one mole of that substance. So if we have one mole of 13 molecules, um, its mass will be 13 grams. And for that reason, we, call, we say that its molar mass which we denote by capital M, we say that its molar mass is 13 grams. Okay, and so this means that we can calculate the exact number of moles of any substance. Okay, so if we have, say we know the mass of a given substance, so we know the mass M in grams, mass in grams of a given substance and we want to know the number of mole of that substance the number of big chunks of, of, of this many atoms okay so we'll denote that number by n so n is the number of mole so n is equal to the mass in grams divided by the mole mass also in grams okay and as we've shown down here as we've shown down here, the molar mass of any substance is equal to its mass number Z, okay? And so, if we have, so therefore for any substance, we can weigh it, find its mass in grams. If we know what it is, we know that its molar mass in grams. And from there, we can figure out the number of mole of substance, okay? So the number of groups of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Okay, and if we want, this is less useful, but if we want, we can say that we can figure out the exact number of atoms. We'll, we'll denote this by big N. We can say that the exact number of atoms in a given substance is going to be equal to the mole of atoms in a given substance times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, okay? And because, because a guy named Avogadro discovered this, we're going to call it Avogadro's number, and we're going to call it Na. Okay, so this number here is Na, Avogadro's number. And so if, that, if there are that many atoms... Of a given, if there are that many, at, if there are that many atoms in a mole, in one mole of any substance, then all we have to do to figure out the number of the number of atoms in a substance is multiply the number of mole that we have by the number of atoms in each mole, as we have down here. Okay, so these this equation, this number, and this equation here, which we'll rewrite over here as little n as little n equals little m over big M. Okay? So it's these these two equations back here, um, as well as Avogadro's number, which we've got up there, that we're going to use in another video to show you how to calculate the number of mole of a substance or the uh, the number of atoms of a substance. Okay? So we'll do that in another video.